Hey friend, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my behind the scenes look at how we record and film and put together our YouTube videos. If you're wanting, you're just interested in the process and you wanna know the BTS of what John and Jenna Rainey do to make you these amazing YouTube tutorials, then this video is for you. Or maybe you wanna start your own YouTube channel and you wanna check out what we do, what equipment we use, the process, all of it. So let's talk. So for our YouTube videos, I of course do research and I practice behind the scenes before we sit down to paint. And I obviously show up to paint and teach the tutorials. Um, but all of the rest of the stuff that you're here to watch this video on is done by John. So let's chat with John. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm John. I am Jenna's video YouTube guy, also husband. And uh, we thought it'd be cool to put this video together for anyone that is just generally interested in the behind the scenes, but also for anyone that wants to start their own art YouTube channel, just kind of give you an insight on equipment, setup, filming, editing, all the stuff that goes into putting together a pretty dope art tutorial. So let's start with the equipment that we use. For cameras, we just recently upgraded to these really awesome Blackmagic 6K cameras. Yes, they are 6K. We actually film in 4K for a variety of different reasons, but this was the right camera for us. I love these cameras. We have two of them. I'm actually not using one now because the screens don't flip out. So they're not like a good vlog camera. Jenna's not here. I'm just recording myself. I needed a flip out screen, but these are the cameras we use. They're super sick. I love them. Like I said, we just upgraded to them and they're 4k. And when you're doing art tutorials, like having really crisp, awesome film footage is pretty nice to have. I will say this though, they're, they're a really, really good value. They're pretty expensive, but they're a really good value for what you get. If you're just getting into it, it might be a bit overkill. The cameras that we were using, and actually the one I'm using right now, are Canon 70Ds. These are perfectly great, way, way, way more affordable. These are, you're gonna shoot in 1080, so the film quality isn't gonna be nice and crispy quite like the 4K footage, but it's gonna be perfectly fine quality. If you're looking for two cameras, like what we use, like an overhead and like a close-up shot, I definitely recommend using these. They're great, but the 4K cameras are sick. For the lenses that we use on the two cameras, uh, the wide angle lens, so like the top down shot or when Jenna's talking direct to camera, is the Sigma, 18 to 35 millimeter. I really like it. I don't know what else to say about it. Buy it, it's pretty sick. Um, I wonder how many times I'm gonna say the word sick in this video. Um, and the details lens, or like the side angle kind of close up lens is the Canon 50 millimeter, which is also awesome. I might upgrade it at some point, but also I like it. it works perfectly fine. I don't know why I would need to upgrade. it. Those are the lenses we use. For audio, we record audio, um, you know, separately. I use a Rode NTG2 condenser mic that is plugged in with an XLR. I'd show it to you, but I'm using it right now. Um, use an XLR cable plugged into the Zoom H6 handy recorder, just this portable device. Um, and it records the audio on a little SD card. It's awesome, I love it. I don't know what else to say, it's great. So, oh, and then the lights. We use these aperture lights. Those are also a little on the pricey side and we just recently upgraded to those lights as well. And so like the total package that we use, especially the cameras and lights, they're a little bit pricey. So if you're just getting into it, I'd maybe look for some alternatives. But we just recently upgraded because we're really getting into this YouTube game and we're like, gonna be doing it for a long time to come. And so we're like, let's just get some awesome equipment that's gonna last a very, very long time and allow us to put together really high quality art tutorials. That's the equipment we use. Is that everything? Oh, the stands. For the overhead, we just use like a C stand. 
with a monopod. You'll see in the time lapse that I'm gonna show. Um, nothing overly fancy there. One thing that's really cool is we ha I have this uh, swivel boom mount that I use for the detail shots. And it's cool because I can manipulate it and like take it wherever I want to, but you can like literally put it wherever you want to. The only drawback that I found is it's spring loaded and super squeaky. It is so squeaky. So if you watch Jenna's art tutorials and you catch like a spring loaded squeak noise every once in a while, it's so hard to move that thing without it being noisy. And then Jenna's teaching and it's just a whatever. But the stand, the mount is pretty cool. That's the equipment that we use. Um, oh, and, and I have a Manfrotto uh, tripod that's also really, really nice. I like it. All, all the equipment, is um, we gathered it and it's on Jenna's Amazon storefront. I'll make sure that the link is really high in the description so you can find it. But if you're interested to peruse the equipment, you can just click on the storefront, click on the film equipment that we use and everything's in there. That's the equipment. Now for setup, let me tell you a little bit about the process and we'll get into it. So first, when we film, we film about four tutorials in a day. So what we do is we have Jenna's art, actual teaching portions. We, we film all four of those back to back to back to back, and then we'll reset all the camera gear to do the direct to camera stuff. So that we have a nice pretty background and all that stuff. Um, and that's for like all the intros and outros and things like that. So first we set up um, for the painting portion, for the actual teaching portion. So get the overhead camera, you know, to fit the frame. I. Personally, I want to have the paper and the palette in the frame so that people can not only see like what she's painting, but also the color mixing and the palette stuff. That's important to me to have in the frame. And then there's the over the shoulder camera on that boom mount that I can move wherever I want to. Pretty self-explanatory, you know, just make sure it's all nice and good looking. I guess for the overhead camera, a tip, that, I mean, this isn't like really a tutorial, but a tip, make sure that the lens is like really parallel with the table. Um, you you want to get as flat as possible. You don't want it like tilted in any direction because then your footage is just going to look kind of like slanted and wonky and weird. Then you want to get the mic set up, the audio set up. I guess the tip there is get the mic as close to your speaking, your mouth. You want to get the mic as close to the mouth as possible without it being in the frame, obviously. Um, the tricky part of it all, in my opinion, with setup is the lighting. The lighting is the trickiest part because with an art tutorial, you know, like for us, for example, and apply this to like whatever you're considering doing, if you're considering doing anything, the paper. You want the paper to be, you want everything to be like really evenly lit, but you don't want weird shadows coming from all directions. So for example, if Jenna has her paintbrush right here, and there's a light blasting here and a light blasting from this direction, you're gonna have your evenly lit paper, but you're gonna have wonky shadows all over the place. So I've been tweaking with this a lot. I think I finally got something. I've had some really poor performances as a video guy uh, in older tutorials of ours. Just scroll back a little bit, click them. They're embarrassing. I hate that they're even on YouTube, but they're up there, whatever. So I think I finally got it. So basically what I do, if this is TMI, you know, you can skip this part, but for the lighting, if you're interested, if you got a paintbrush here, the way that I get even lighting on the paper and not super wonky shadows, I have this light over here blasting here so that with the close up shots, there's no shadows kind of obstructing what Jenna's painting. Uh, the shadows are gonna be like uh, mostly like on this side. So the close ups, you can see it nice and clear. But instead of having this light blasting here, creating crazy shadows, but to make the lighting even, I take this light and I have it top down so that the palette is still lit. The right side of the paper still gets light, but it's not as harsh like light blasting this side of her hand, creating these crazy shadows. I don't know if anyone cares about that. Um, took me a long time to kind of figure out and like tweak things. And, and I'm honestly probably still going to tweak things because I'm really, 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 really picky with how, how things look. I'm hypercritical and whatever. That's the trickiest part of an art tutorial setup, in my opinion. 
Once all that's set up, we film the fort, um, painting, uh, the teaching portions of the tutorials. It takes a really long time, depending on the videos that the tutorials that we're putting together, but it usually takes like a good, I don't know, two, three hours plus, depending on some of the stuff that we're, that we're filming. Yeah, so once the tutorials are all painted and taught, um, then we have to reset all of the gear um, so that we can, you know, do the intros and outros, the direct to camera stuff and have pretty backgrounds and whatnot. So we reset all that kind of stuff. I reset everything. Jenna lays down on the couch because she's exhausted. <laughs> we love putting these together for everyone, but it's a lot of work. So. Jenna's on the couch resting while I reset everything, get the direct to camera, I get like a little side shot. For the lighting, I have one light kind of coming on Jenna's face here to create some like really natural shadows. I don't have the light set up right now. The, I, I'm just in our office and it could look like total trash once I get this on the computer, but I'm not too worried about it for this video. Get that light and then the other light, I'm just kind of blasting at the ceiling and just trying to make the lighting as even as possible that I can. Um, and then we film the intros and outros. Once we're done with that, then it's, we're done. We're done with the filming portion. And then I tear all the equipment down and then I bring the cameras, I bring the SD cards with all the video and audio files up here. This is my desk. This is my super handsome son. Um, cutie pie. And, uh, and then I just file dump, basically. I take the, um, the SD cards, I file dump everything onto a 14 terabyte hard drive, which I, I don't put all of the files, I don't put any of the files on my computer. All goes onto this 14 terabyte hard drive, which sounds absolutely ridiculously massive. But uh, when we upgraded to, when we upgraded to these puppies and we started getting these files are huge when, we, when we're filming. So anyways, like today's film, all these videos that we filmed today, I uploaded uh, all the 4K footage and it's like almost a terabyte. It's like 800 gig, it's crazy. Let's talk organization. <laughs> if you, <clears throat> voice crack, whoa. If you have all these files, just kind of all the video and audio files just kind of thrown onto your computer or thrown onto a hard drive without proper organization. You just throw them on there willy-nilly. Like, good luck. You are could be in for a world of chaos. <laughs> so I'm really big on organization. So let me give you some tips or at least I'll share with you how I organize the files and it keeps things pretty clean for me. Basically what I do is on the hard drive, I have, you know, generating YouTube click on that folder. Then there's a tutorial folder, click on that. And then I create a new folder that's named the four tutorials that we have just filmed, click on that. Then I have labeled sound, wide, details, and edits. So obviously I put the sound in the sound folder. I put all the overhead and the wide angle shots in the wide and so on and so forth. So all those master files are just there. Uh, and then the edits folder, click on that. And then that's where the four tutorials will live in that edits folder. When all the footage is on my hard drive officially, then I will open for editing. I use Adobe products. I use um, Adobe Premiere for video and I use Adobe Audition for audio. When all my files are there, all my files are organized and they're all nestled all cozy like in their folders. I open up an Adobe Premiere project that is like the master project. And so this could be like so basic for people. I don't even know if you wanna know this. This could be TMI, but whatever. You've already clicked away by this point if you're not interested. Um, in the Adobe Premiere project, I have a master project. I put all four tutorials, all the video in there. I edit them exactly how I want them to look or get them as close as I possibly can. Then I open Adobe Audition to edit the sound the way that I want it to sound, or at least as close as possible. This is not a premiere or an audition tutorial. There are some really, really awesome ones on YouTube. That's how I learned everything. And I'm probably not even doing everything right. So you don't wanna learn from me anyways. Once I get the sound and the, oh, and then I bring the sound over to premiere in that master project. Once I get everything to look and sound the way I want it to, then I'll open a new project that is the first tutorial that I'm going to edit. 
Then I'll just copy and paste it, get it into that project, and everything looks and sounds the way that I want it to, and I edit it the way that I want it to look, and I'm done. But then when I'm starting the next tutorial, then I'll have everything already looking how I want it to look, sounding how I want it to sound, and I'll bring it into that project. And when I'm done with that, and I go to the third tutorial, you know, you get, you get the points all there in that master project. Once a tutorial is done, then you export it, which is when you're in like Adobe Premiere, it's like a little bit more complicated than you would expect it to be. So definitely just YouTube tutorial, you know, there's a million, you'll find one and you'll learn how to do it in two seconds. Let me pause for a second. If the Premiere audition is a bit overwhelming and crazy, you know, you don't necessarily need to do that. I, I think, I don't remember. I think I started, when we started this Generating YouTube channel, I probably started with like iMovie. And some of you, if you are if you already are kind of in the process of doing art tutorials and you're just getting into the swing of things, like some of you might use iMovie. No judgment, no judgment whatsoever. That's where I started. All I'll say is I highly recommend looking into upgrading into a program like Adobe Premiere because once you do that, then you realize how crazy limited you are when you're in like a free, more basic program like iMovie or something that comes on your computer. Once you like start working with Premiere or something, you'll be like, oh, I would never go back. But if that's what works for you now, then that's what works for you. And like, no pressure, no judgment. So once we're exported, um, then basically from this point, I use Adobe um, Illustrator and Photoshop to edit all the thumbnails. Again, it's just kind of like a work in progress. I'm just kind of like learning as I'm going. Again, YouTube tutorials. Um, but that's how I create the thumbnails. I upload each tutorial to YouTube twice. Um, because we have a Patreon channel. And uh, I think this is how people do it. I don't know, I, I tried to research it and I couldn't really find a clear answer. I'm pretty sure this is how people do it, but how we do it for Patreon. So we offer the tutorials ad free, but to do, like when you go the back end of Patreon, you, you don't upload videos to Patreon, you upload videos to YouTube and then you take the link, put it into Patreon and that's how you post to Patreon. I'm saying the word Patreon a lot, it's a weird word. To do that and to get your, if your channel's monetized and you wanna offer ad-free experience, ad-free videos for your patrons, which is what we do, we post the video to YouTube twice. So the first time I post, it's unlisted, so you don't see it on YouTube, and it's not monetized, so there's no ads. Then I take that link, bring it over to Patreon, our patrons can watch the tutorials, either on Patreon or they can click into YouTube or whatever, but it's an ad-free experience, which is sick. I mean, come on, right? YouTube ads. And then I upload it again to YouTube, and then that one's public. That's probably what you're watching right now, unless you're a patron. And if you're a patron, thanks for your support. Um, but uh, so I upload it a second time. It's public and it's monetized because obviously, if this video has shown you, it takes a lot of work and to get some pennies from it is nice. It's not a lot, but it's nice to have some type of compensation. I get the thumbnail all done. I edit, I uh, upload it to YouTube twice and then I usually schedule it. I choose, um, we've kind of chosen generally like Fridays and Sundays are when we post. Um, and then and then I'll sprinkle in other posts, like if we have like a cool time lapse or something, maybe that'll be on like a Wednesday or a Saturday or something like that. But for the major, like the new tutorials are like Friday mornings and Sunday mornings. And then they live on YouTube forever. Even if the edits, if I think that they're total garbage, which we have plenty of those, we have such a supportive like fan base. Thank you so much for like your love and support. I think we have some tutorials on here that's like total trash, but I'm like hypercritical of our, and I'm, I'm not saying Jenna, Jenna's awesome. I'm saying me, I'm saying the video, the editing, whatever. 
and this is not a pity party, but I'm just saying like, it's a process. You just like learn and you go and you post and you learn more and you look back and you're like, man, that looks like trash, but let's keep going and make things better. Did you did you notice that silver plaque right there? 100,000 subscribers, pretty sick. Um, it covers my uh, 14 terabyte ugly uh, external hard drive, pretty sick. Thanks for subscribing. If you're not subscribed, please do that. I think I'm done. I'm just kind of rambling at this point. Let's send it back to Jenna to close out the video. Well, I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe it was insightful. Let him know in the comments how good of a job he did filming, sitting in the captain's chair. Um, and as always, thank you for watching all of our videos, liking, commenting, subscribing. It means Z world, obviously seeing in this video, we put a lot of work and effort into making these videos. So every little bit of engagement and help counts. So thank you and we'll see you in the next video.